To be successful in business, it really requires you to do a lot of things right. And one of those is collaboration with others and using the right tools. One of the most popular tools out today is called Slack. And you are in for a treat. If you have heard about that or if you're using that product, because we get a chance to talk with Brian Elliott. Brian Elliott is the general manager of Slack product at Slack. And he shows us what can be done, how you can do it, and some new features that they have available. Join me now as I get a chance to talk with this incredible guy and you get a chance to learn a lot about Slack. collaboration and we can power charge that with technology we get a lot done there's several tools out on the market and one that is particularly popular and I like a lot is called slack slack is a tool that gives you the ability to well as they say have cloud-based team collaboration as a tool and it does a very good job for many people and today we have Brian Elliott joining us he is the general manager for the slack platform at slack and he's joining us from the offices out there in California Brian thanks for being with us today Thanks for having me, Terry. I appreciate it. Well, I'm really excited about this. It's kind of like, hey, this is cool. We get a chance to hear directly from you. It's like we've gone to Mount Olympus to find <laughs> out, okay, how is this really marvelous tool called Slack working? I want to start from the big picture and uh, get the idea of where collaboration comes in in tools like Slack and others over email. I hear a lot of people say, well, hey, I can just use email for it. Tell me why I would want to use a tool like Slack versus email or some other collaboration tools. So Slack's a collaboration hub that brings teams together. If you think about what's been happening from an enterprise software perspective, what you're seeing is consumerization of IT. It's the tools and practices that people have gotten used to in their everyday lives. One of our customers put, this, put it this way. Um, I've got the Jetsons on my phone. Why should I have to use the Flintstones tools at work? Right? Oh, I like That's that. <laughs> Messaging, messaging has become a core backbone of what people do every day, right? In their everyday lives, people are used to the access that they get through messaging and text. What Slack has done is built a collaboration hub on top of a messaging platform. So it's, what it's really about is the ease of access of your team, ease of communication, but also the fact that the work happens inside of channels. So it's not just a one-way or a two-way text messaging infrastructure. It's actually about the fact that you've got this collaboration that's happening where teams that work in channels, which might be a project, which might be a product area, which might be a functional area, are able to communicate with each other, maintain context of what's been going on, and share information. It's also really important that we not only get the people together and the information together, but we bring together the tools that they use to get work done every day. And that's really what our platform is about. Our platform is actually how we bring together all the people, all the tools that people use at work into that collaboration hub. Yeah, I like that. And that's really important that we're able to get not just a message, but we have the tools that are there and pull them together. As a matter of fact, I think you've got some new features that have come out in Slack. If you don't mind, could we get you to share your screen with us a little bit? Tell us a little bit about some of the new features and for those that haven't used Slack, what it does, and for those that have, maybe what they might not know about it. Sure. I'm glad to share with you. So if you think about how our platform started, there's a series of apps. Matter of fact, today there are over 1,500 apps in the Slack directory that come from leading enterprise software companies like Google, SAP, Oracle, um, uh, Salesforce, Workday, uh, as well as a wide variety of other app developers. But all that traditionally has been about getting work done inside of Slack. Let me give you an example. Concur has an app that they've developed that allows me to get a notification when, somebody, when someone submits an expense on my team. So Eliza, who's one of my product managers, submits an expense for the product manager book lunch. And the book lunch was a $400 expense for the, you know, everybody on the team. It's compliant with our expense policies. And what I'm getting is that information in Slack, along with a couple simple buttons, one of which says approve, one of which says decline, one of which says go into Concur to, to do more complex operations. That's a great, quick, contextual workflow that allows me to save about five minutes in my day that otherwise, if I'd gotten that notification in email, it would have been click the link, wait for the window to pop up, wait for Concur to render, find the tab, find the expense report from Liza, find the approval button, and get it clicked there. That is a that, lot to keep up with. <laughs> and lot, and it actually gets up. lost and falls in between the cracks. And I see what Slack does is it says, okay, here's a tool that helps you to retain that. 
That's right. And so traditionally, we've allowed you to bring all of that work into Slack. What we're going to be launching on Tuesday, the 22nd, is the ability for people to also get the same sort of uh, ease and affordance of getting work done with all the rest of the apps that they use, but also do it from a round trip perspective. It's really about closing the loop on interactions, on these integrations with all the rest of the tools that you, that you use every day. Maybe I can give you an example. Um, this is a team working inside of Slack. They're working on a channel called Project Nano. They're working on the Nano project. Um, midway through the stream of, com of conversation that's been happening, you'll see that there's an Asana has pushed in a notification about a task that Rita's been working on. Jennifer uh, pipes in. There's another new ticket coming in from Zendesk, which is a customer service application. Steve, actually, yeah, there we go. Steve, uh, midway through the conversation, says, looks like the only thing that's left is getting legal input to review the changes uh, to the ter terms of service. Rita, can you have a look at this? Rita says, sure thing. What we're allowing Rita to do is click a button that says create a task in Asana, which is the task management software that Rita and the rest of the team use to make sure that they're staying coordinated in terms of who's tackling what tasks. That simple button then spawns a window that allows Rita to then edit the content and information. So she can, it pulls the description that, uh, that was on the prior page directly in there. So the same message is sitting in the description. Looks like the only thing that's left is get the legal, get the legal team to review the terms of service. Rita can now assign that task to herself, make sure it's associated with the Nano launch project, and set a due date. When she hits the Create button, she's now added that uh, particular item into their Asana board automatically. But Asana also now pushes the same content back in the channel so everybody knows that Rita has just created a new task, and she can view that task in Asana. Matter of fact, if she then goes into her Asana um, uh, team board, she'll now find the same content inside Asana without having to copy paste to move the information back and forth. And really importantly, she also gets a link back to exactly the spot in the channel where this happened. So the context is retained and she knows where this came from. So that if she's looking at this a week later or a month later, she can go back and figure out where did the task come from, who said it, what was this about, and you're not searching back through an email archive or trying to find out where you left off. I think that's really important because too often we lose a lot of productivity going back or where was that email? When was it? And then trying to go through the 4 billion emails and messages we got. Slack gives us the tool to penetrate right to what we need. That's right. That's exactly right. right. I like it. Well, you know, this is a great tool. And I know you, this is going to be uh, available uh, very soon. And for those watching this video, who knows when you'll be watching it, it'll be out there. One of the things that uh, you have with Slack that I particularly like, I'd like to get some of your comments on. If a uh, matter of fact, we can even stop sharing screen right now a little bit sure. so we can see your face even better. And that is, oh, you got over a thousand apps that are available and people can build their own. Tell us a little bit about the benefits of that, of having those apps that are already there, as well as uh, customizing it building our own. Sure. So if you think about what people do at work, they use, everybody wants to use these new best of breed tools and solutions. So people use Google Drive for documents, they use Asana for project management, they use HubSpot for marketing management, they use Zendesk for customer service. All of those companies have built apps that are available in our app directory. It gives teams that use Slack the ability to integrate their workflow across those different services and tools closing the gaps and closing the seams between best of breed software solutions. Makes it really easy to, whether it's approving a concur expense report, whether it's creating a new task in Asana, whether it's actually updating a customer service incident in Zendesk, for someone to do all of that and retain context and retain information across their team. The second part of this though, besides the 1500 apps in the app directory, including you know, every major leading enterprise software company, plus a large, great, healthy ecosystem of startups, is that teams can also build their own internal workflows. If you think back again to the Jetsons versus Flintstones analogy, companies have spent decades building internal workflows, purchase order approval, HR approval processes, uh, ways in which you submit a ticket to get you know, your desk moved. All of those types of things typically are people searching for, where do I go and find that? How do I make that happen? Who needs to approve it? And you wait weeks to make those things occur. What our platform allows people to do is build those integrations and those workflows directly in Slack in the communication and collaboration hub that everybody in the, in the company is using to make sure that's actually really clear how to, get the, how to get those types of workflows approved and how to make uh, work happen. 
uh, an example, uh, Los Angeles Times is one of our bigger uh, enterprise customers. They built a great AI machine that will detect like which stories are trending, what topics are hot, what should they be pushing out given uh, different trends in, uh, online. Uh, and that is very rapid response type of work. The problem is that machine was hooked up to email. And that machine would push out a story and say, this is the sort of thing that we ought to be promoting. That email would then go into a bunch of people's inboxes where it wasn't clear who was going to approve it, what the approval steps were, and if you weren't reading your inbox, you didn't know whether it was there or not, and you didn't know until someone forwarded it to you that you were expected to act on it. With Slack, they built an integration that allows them to take that same input, say who are the people that need to approve it, what's the process flow, and have that happen so they can actually act on those stories immediately, which is what they built the AI uh, for in the first place, and get the results that they wanted by having really clear workflows where people actually were able to collaborate effectively and effortlessly uh, and spend their time getting the, getting you know the task of work done as opposed to spending their time searching. Very nice. I like that. Getting this job done versus searching around, which is really wasted. You know, another thing I want to comment on, you have something I think is very good, and on behalf of entrepreneurs and people using your product around the world, thank you. You give us a free, then you give us the standard and plus choices, all priced so that they can be afforded by someone who is an entrepreneur just getting started or whatever. On behalf of everyone, Brian, thank you very much for what you and your team are doing on that. We're super glad to be doing it. We're also big believers in our fair billing policies, the ability for people who actually are using our product to pay for what they actually use. We've also been continuing that, that trend and that pattern. So there's free, there's standard, there's plus. There's also our enterprise grid product. So we now have 65% of the Fortune 100 that are actually using Slack on a paid basis. And Grid gives those bigger enterprises the ability to aggregate and bring together all the different workspaces that exist within Slack so they get easier sharing across an entire organization. Very good. Well, Brian, someone says, hey, I want to find out more about this. I'm not involved yet. Where do they go to get involved with and get on board with using Slack? Slack.com. Slack.com, and that's S-L-A-C-K, just like you think it would be. That's Brian, right. Ellie, thank you very much for joining us today. We appreciate all you're doing. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it. And and for those of you that are watching this, there's a lot going on with productivity and collaboration. You want to look into this just for on your own. Go out to slack.com, take a look at it. They got a free version so you can try it out and see what it's like and see if it can help you. If you're a solopreneur, it can help you in collaborating with a lot of different people around the world. If you have certain groups you want to be with, there's a lot of opportunities. Thank you very much for joining us today. On behalf of Business Journals, I'm Terry Brock.